to I want us today to go in the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 4. Sometimes 
if they were, if Jesus, no, no, let me start like this. If you know that there is a prophet in the, around, I've seen that many times, but when you know that, oh, if there is a prophet in the room, in the room, then we would like to go and run to him. Why? Because we want to know the future. We want to understand. We have so many questions. And we want it, we want the answer. We would like to have the answer of the question. We want to be sure that God is with us. We want to be sure that God has the control. And, and, and yes, sometimes we are faith, but uh, but uh, it's good to have the confirmation. We like them to have the confirmation. But let me tell you what I want to tell you, what I want to preach about today. The Bible teaches that Jesus went, went about all Galilee. He was teaching in the synagogue. He was preaching the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. So he was speaking the kingdom. He was telling people about the kingdom of God. Amen. But what caught my attention here is he was not only speaking the kingdom, but the Bible said that he was healing all manner of disease. That you can can you imagine the Bible said all manner of disease. That means that there were not there were no disease that Jesus could not heal. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? There were no there were no kind of sickness who was too high for him. And I was thinking about that even today. That is Jesus. He was healing all manner of disease. I think this same Jesus have not changed. The Bible says the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus has the cap had the capability to heal all kind of disease, that means that even today he can heal all, all kind of disease. Is that right? And the Bible says he was he was famed. People were coming, to, so his reputation was going over over all the area of of Syria. And people say that all in all over region they would bring in sick people. They would bring in demon possessed people. They would be oh, and if somebody has a, any matter in his life, he would converge at that time to Jesus because he because. The healing, the healing power was upon him. And I was thinking, wow, Lord, you were doing, you were doing this, you were doing that. So, and people then were attracted. So they came from everywhere to, to come to Jesus. So there were a multitude around Jesus. But all these multitude of people, they were moved by the miracles that Jesus was doing. They were moved by the, by the need they, were, they had. So, and I was thinking, well, but Jesus knew their heart, so he will, he will continue to perform them. But when Jesus saw that there were a lot of multitude of people, that he was really famous, when the people would come to him, the Bible teaches them that he went to the mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. Then let me tell you one thing. All the blessing that you may accure, you may have in this earth, all what you may need, all what Jesus can give you in this earth, is good. It's not a bad thing. So it's not it's not a bad thing. So sometimes I, I preach sometimes hard so that people think that oh, if I if I it perhaps it may be a sin if I ask for a blessing. For God, no, no. There's not. There's no. There's. There's good thing to ask for God to ask blessing because God was healing. He was healing people. He was delivering people. So it's good to ask to be. It's good to be blessed by God. It's good to be healed by God. It's good to be promoted by God. It's good. If it's good to be, you know, it's good that it's good. All those things are good. And see, but all those things don't stay. The old, the real thing is not that. Amen. And that's what what we make mistakes. You know, I was I was thinking about the so-called uh, 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 evangelism of um, of the doctrine of um, prosperity, and I was thinking really about that. I was really thinking about that, 
And there were, and people were thinking, they, and I was thinking, wow, actually, is that, is, listen carefully before somebody go and, and twist the word I want to say. Actually, is the, is what is wrong in this doctrine? Because prosperity is not the curse. Prosperity is a blessing Amen. of God. Amen. Are you getting what I'm Amen. saying? Amen. God said, I will prosper you. God, you know, mm -hmm. God wants us to prosper. Amen. So prosperity is not the curse. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, let me bring that very clearly to you. If God bless you with a good job, it's not a curse. Amen. It's a blessing. <coughs> if you have a house, if you have a, a family, whatever God has given into your hands to facilitate your life in this earth, it's not a curse. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not a curse. Amen. Amen. And I would, if I were you, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very frank with you. When I put my knee to the to, to when I go to my knee and say, God, I want to be excellent. I want to be excellent in all what I'm doing. I want to be excellent in the ministry. I want to be excellent in my house. I want to be excellent in all areas of my life. I want to be excellent. Why, God? Because you are excellent. Amen. Are you getting what I'm Amen. trying to tell you? Hallelujah. But the thing is this. Brother and sister, if that is all what will make my life happy, if it's all what I need, if it's all what I requested, if it's all what I want, then I'm in a big trouble. That's true. Because what is the for which purpose God will give me so so, so uh, blessing of this earth? Because all what God is giving me will pass by. That's true. But what is the purpose of God to give me all those things? The purpose of God to give me all those things is to prepare me to the real thing. Amen. Is to lead me into the real things. Amen. And the real thing is at the mountain. The real teaching was at the mountain. Amen. Amen. The real work was at the mountain. Amen. So God had to, he had to prepare the way. Hallelujah. Because God knows if I'm so hungry, you know, I'm supposed to, and that's David said, oh, don't me, it's, it's a poem, so don't give me a lot, Solomon said, uh, don't give me a lot so that I may ignore you or I will, you know, and don't give me so less so that I can curse you. You know, what, what I'm just paraphrasing, what I'm trying to tell somebody today is, God will make room for you to prepare you for the real thing. But the thing is, the, 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 that is the real thing. The, 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 no, not the real thing, but that is, that is unfortunately what people, what, where we sometimes stop on. When God gives us one thing, we want more. Hallelujah. But we don't want more of the real thing we don't want more of what is in this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we are unsatisfied sometimes because we want more. <coughs> if God give me one car, then I want the next car. You know, I was speaking with somebody who has a very nice car. Very nice car, but a very nice car. And, I, and the person would tell me, oh, I have this nice car. I say, it's a very really nice car. I said, okay, but the next car I want to have is a more better car. I was thinking, this car is already a nice car. Why don't you rejoice for that? <coughs> but the mind of the mind is, of, of the mind kind is, we only want the best. We only want, if you have this, you want more, you want more, you want more. And if you are not careful, you will, you will make your own existence Mm -hmm. Depending on what you have. Amen. 
Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. And you will reduce God in the bless of on the material blessing. Mm -hmm. You will reduce your spiritual life uh, mm -hmm. on the material blessing. Amen. Amen. So that if you don't want, if you don't have what you require to have, then you will think perhaps God is not happy. That's why God is not giving me it. Mm. Are you getting what I'm mm. trying to tell you? And that is the mistake I believe that we as Christians we sometimes make. It's not the real thing, brother. The real thing is when Jesus saw that the, the attention, the, the attention of the people was on him, then he withdrew himself into the mountain. Why? He wanted to have an intimacy. He wanted to bring the real thing. And the real thing, brother and sister, is about the kingdom of God. Amen. The thing, the real thing is about your soul. The real thing is about eternity. The real thing is the kingdom <laughs> of heaven. Our real hope. Our real hope. Our real destination. Amen? Amen. And what is your real destination? And that is what is really important. Despite your social condition, despite, despite your, your, your family condition, your financial condition, there's one thing who really matters to Jesus. And the thing, the key is what he was he is, he is trying to explain to them in Matthew 5. The Bible says, he opened his mouth and taught them and said, it's all about the kingdom of God. Brother, no matter your condition today, no matter if you are in need or not in need, no matter of you, of if you have, uh, if you have request or not, or, or not, despite, no matter if, if, if you, if you feel happy or feel sad, no matter of, or, 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 or if you are sick or healed, uh, no matter of your condition in this earth, Jesus is speaking <coughs> to you. He said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, it's not about the earthly poorness. It's about the poor, the, 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 the poor of the heart. Hallelujah. If you are poor in heart, then you will see the kingdom of God. What does that mean, being poor in heart? I always think about that. I always say, hey, what is that? Blessed are the poor in heart. What, <coughs> when do I know that I'm poor in heart? Hallelujah. You know, somebody who is poor in heart is because nobody, if you are a child of God, then God will give you life in abundance. And life, the Bible says that life keep your heart because that is the source of life. So if your heart is poor, <laughs> what does that mean? That means that that it only means that all what God, all what God has given you, or all what God has put inside you, or all what God has granted you, brother is to share. Amen. Because if you if you are if you are not somebody who like to share, you will never be poor. Uh -huh. Hallelujah! I'm speaking about poor in heart. Hallelujah! So we need to to understand that we are a, a, peace, a, a children of God. We need to have a open hand. We need to be cheerful. That's why God said, "I like cheerful giving." Hallelujah. What God give you, what God will give you life, if it's gift in the spirit, if it's natural, material gift, if whatever you are, be aware that you need to share. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Because this world has become so egoistic, brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Me, myself, and I. We are living, you know, I was thinking that this, we are, the world is living into what we call 
capitalism, capitalism, mm -hmm. aggressive capitalism. Mm -hmm. It's all about me. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I need to be a success story. And if I'm a success story, then people can be inspired. So people will respect me. They, you know, I always wonder. There are people like they are, they have they they are, they are a success story. <laughs> they don't give anything to other people. They don't share. Amen. Mm. But we like that lifestyle. We like them. We love them. Amen. Mm. And 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 that is what happen when we come in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord, that is what we like too, you know. That's why, you know, the Bible says that we overcome by the by the word, by, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But brother and sister, your testimony is not something to glorify yourself with. Your testimony is something you share with people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's why you will have people in the house of the Lord. They cannot, they are very happy to be in the house of the Lord, but they cannot go and share the gospel with somebody outside. Why? Wow. Oh, Amen. Jesus. That's why you will see some people, and I'm telling you what I've already seen. You will see people, hey, they are they are very comfortable in their job place. And they say, and you will have, and they will say, oh, we need another, we are looking for another person. We are not looking for another person, but they can, oh, our company is looking at another person, but they will not come and tell you, hey, I tell the brother, no way, hey, I know somebody who don't have a job, I know somebody who's struggling financially, and he has a good profit, perhaps they can take him, if I, if I tell him, he say, no, I will not, I'd rather not tell, not, give, not tell him, because if I tell him or tell her, I will have more problem than, you know, mm -hmm. what is the parallel? You are there, they want somebody else. If it's not, they, they want anyway somebody else, so they will take every, somebody else. So sometimes it's good that they take somebody that they that you know. Amen. Amen. Are you getting me? I, I, you know, I, I was even to this morning when I was sharing that with my wife, very upset about it, and, and that was that the thing that we have in the house of the Lord. You know this this uh, this kind of monopolism. Mm. You know the people in the church they are mono you know they like to monopolism. You know if you are if for example we organize something if, even if you initiate something is very good like you know and but if you are doing that why don't you share with people? Amen. You know and I was thinking God is something wrong with us. If I know something, what what should I, should I not share with people? Amen. 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 Because we are so self, the Lord, the, the world is so selfish, and we are so we are so influenced of that, so that we become also selfish. But it's not the nature of somebody who wants to see the kingdom. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Bless are the poor in the spirit. Why don't we, that, why don't we be ready to help our brother, our sisters? Amen. We need to be in that place. The Bible says, "Bless are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted." Hallelujah. Okay. When you read that, you may think, "Oh, so blessed are those that mourn." So if I start mourning. Then I will see the kingdom. Then I will be comforted. So I might keep myself and start more. Huh? I shall. You, I can do any foolish, foolish thing and take the consequences more. So God will comfort me. That's not what we are speaking about. Mm -hmm. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell? You? Amen. Blessed are those. You know. <laughs> And again, it is referring to others. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that is morning. I can hear it because I see people in this the this desperation. Amen. I can mourn because I'm not I'm, I'm not happy to see this situation, this situation, this situation. I may mourn because I see such injustice around me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So 
we need to start to learn about things that we still that we find not comfort and not normal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I'm learning when I when I see my brother who's not yet there where where I know that God wants him to be. Amen. I'm learning about my brother who who who, 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 who wants to eat something but he don't have anything to eat. I'm mourning about the suffering of my brother or my sister. I'm mourning about you know we need to mourning. I'm mourning about the, the, my friend outside who is not yet in the faith and if he die now he will go to hell. I'm mourning about you know. We need we need to be good. We need to be we need to have that in us. Yes, sir. Because if you take time to learn about the soul of somebody else, God will comfort you. Amen. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Amen. Blessed are the meek, they shall hate the earth. Hallelujah. Me, humble, suitable spirit. Hallelujah. We need to be. You know, and I always, uh, on Friday, I would tell, I would, I would tell the people this. You know, if I want to go higher, if I want to go really high, if you want to go higher, if you want to go higher with God, will you, there's three principles you need to learn. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You need to learn obedience, loyalty, humbleness. There's some principle that goes with elevation. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, we need to be to seek after the righteousness. Hallelujah. That is something we need to be in our DNA. Amen. We need to seek after righteousness. After the righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In another word, we need to seek after what is right. Amen. In the eyes of God. Amen. That is what righteousness means, actually. What is right in the eyes of God? Oh, and how can I know that? By the way. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, <laughs> I was explaining to somebody one day, I was telling him, look, you cannot be righteous enough. You have to seek always after righteousness. You cannot be holy enough. You can. You have to seek daily after holiness. Amen. Are you getting me what I'm trying to tell you? We need to 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 to, to yield after virtue, after what God loves. Hallelujah. Righteousness. God, I want your kingdom. I want your righteousness. I want to know you better. I want I want I want to be more like you, God. I want the righteousness of God be in rooted in my life. That's what we need to seek for, brother and sister. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I may do something who are not blessed with the righteousness of God. But I cannot justify that. I need to expose that. Why? Because I'm thirst after righteousness. I'm hungry after righteousness. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. <coughs> Blessed are the merciful. We need to be merciful. What does that mean to be merciful? Merciful only means, hey, I need to admit, I need to accept, I need to digest that people around me are not perfect. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Tell me. I need to be aware on the fact that my brother or my sister, no matter how spiritual they are, they may hit my boat. They may, they may, they, they may do something that I can I do not like. Hallelujah. They may hurt my feelings. 
They may, they may, they may do something who will hurt me. Uh, and, uh, and the Bible teaches me that blessings are the merciful. I need to be merciful. Amen. I need to, to forgive. I need to, you know, that is something we need to have. I need, you know, I, it's, it's, I cannot always, I, I cannot always stand for my right. Oh, I have the right to do this because they, they, they did me wrong. It was not right. What they, Amen. Did. Yes, they were not right. But the Bible teach me I need to be merciful. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because I myself am not perfect and I need mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hallelujah. We need to be sometimes simple in heart. Amen. Simple in heart. Poor in heart. Or, you know, we need to be simple. Hallelujah. Blessed are the pure. <laughs> you know, let me bring it in a simple way. Let me break it down in a simple way. It's not easy <coughs> to not be jealous. But I need to get jealousy out of my life. Amen. Because I need a few hours. Amen. It's not good to be mean. It's not easy to not do certain things. But I need to get those things out of my life because I what? I need to be pure in heart. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you today? I need to be, I need to simple my heart. Let me tell you this. The way, the way to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's not good to think too far. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you that because I'm, I'm, I'm someone, I like to think too much. I like, um, I like to meditate too much. Sometimes I like to, you know, sometimes I would be like, I would stay just like this and when everybody is sleeping, my mind will start to go from here to there, you know, make around the room, you know. Exactly. And you know, I like to, you know, I like to think too much. But let me tell you something. It's not good to be to think to go too much in thinking something about certain situation. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's good to be naive. Amen. Sometimes it's good to be naive. Somebody say it's good to be naive. What, what what is that? What what the, what what is the what is the purpose? You know, sometimes you can come to somebody and say, so I say, somebody will tell you like, hey, you know, brother, um, I uh, I see things this this I did this and that. It's okay. You did that. You are this. You are that. It's okay. I, sometimes we just need to take what people say as they say it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to take it as they say it and not to think after what they were thinking while, while, when saying that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes we like to go beyond the understanding, beyond the, beyond the, the mind of people to, to desecate. To, to look what they have in their mind, what they were, you know, and the more you go in that, the more you lose yourself into deception. Amen. Because sometimes you go too far. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let, sometimes it's good to 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 keep things keep uh, to keep things very simple the way we hear it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to be peacemakers. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to be peacemakers. I want to admit something to you. We are not always in the situation where we want to make peace with people. 
Are you getting what I'm trying to say? You know, I, I want to, 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 to remove you the cup of the superman that you think that you are. Sometimes it's difficult to make peace with people. That's true. Hey, this word people can have. Have somebody really hurt you for the blame? Have somebody really been mean to you? And then you have to make peace with him. How is that possible? It's difficult, brother and sister. It's difficult. Even if you have the the Holy Ghost more bigger than this house, it's difficult to make peace with people who continually hurt you. That's why you need peacemakers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why you, you need peacemakers. There, 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 there must be somebody around you who, who have to tell you, brother, uh, it's, it's hard what they did to you, it's hard what you, what you went through, but please make peace with yourself and make peace with people. Amen. You need that voice. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes, because when you are in your flesh, the spirit of the Lord is weak, then you need to hear somebody else tell you to them. That's why you need to be a peacemaker. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Huh? You need to be a peacemaker so that you can be help, a help for somebody else. May somebody say amen. Amen. And this is the part I want to take a little bit time to speak with you about. You know, as a children, as children of God, we face persecution. We have to face persecution. It's not that persecution is good or is pleasant. Amen. But Jesus said, blessed are they which are persecuted for the righteousness. So let me put things right. Amen? If you are persecuted because you steal something from somebody and it's after you to get what, is, what you steal from him, so he's persecuting you, oh, that is not persecution that Jesus is speaking about. Amen? Because that has nothing to do with righteousness. Amen? <laughs> if you take the husband or the wife of somebody and he's after you with a knife to kill you and you say, oh, I'm persecuted. My brother, let me tell you something. It's not, you are not persecuted of, because of the righteousness. You are persecuted because of your foolishness. Amen? <laughs> Jesus said, I'm speaking about other, a really kind of persecution. This persecution who, who is made you is on you because you love God. Amen. Amen. Amen? Because you stand for the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you don't want to compromise. Because you don't want to do things as others do. do. <coughs> I think about that persecution because of his name, because of the righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me tell you something. If you are a child of God, you will go through that persecution because as, as, as at the moment when people, some certain people, not all the people, so certain people will know, oh, this man is not like you, that like me, you will see persecution come. There is, uh, the persecution I may have come in very variants, very variants. I want to tell you the soft variants of persecution, the soft variant of persecution. The soft variant of persecution is like, have you ever heard it? And it's not coming from Christians sometimes, most of the time. It's coming from unbelievers. When some people know that you are a Christian, what they do, what do they do sometimes? Very, very soft. You will do things, you will do, and then you will hear this. Then you will say that you're a Christian and you're doing this and you're doing that. Have you ever heard that? People will come and persecute you, say, and you say that you're a Christian? And you say that you're a Christian, you know, they, they might provoke you, you say something. And you know, you know, they know much. Listen to this. Unbelievers know sometimes much the law of God 
than us. But they don't, well, not that they know more than us, but they, they, they show sometimes that they know more than us. Why, when they want to take advantage of that, you know? Because when you are a, a, a being a child of God, it's not being coward. It's not being, it's not being like passive, you know? That everything can come on my way. No, being Christian does, does not mean that. You know that sometimes uh, some people have this uh, this this perversion mind that if you are Christian, so everybody you can you can lay down and everybody come and march on you like this. Amen. Huh? Huh? Pe many people in the world expect, even sometimes in the church, they expect that. Oh, if you are a Christian. So you have to lay down and people have, can do with you whatever they want. They can say anything they want about you. They can do everything. They can, you know, they can come, they can beat you. Like somebody will come and slap you. And if you want to react, and if you react, they say, but the Bible says that if I slap you, if somebody slap you in the right to show the other, the other part, they know more the Bible than you. But I believe, I believe that if they really knew the Bible, they would not even slap you. Why are you slapping you? Amen. Huh? Huh? That's that things, you know. Hey, as a Christian, the Bible says that we need to have the spirit of boldness. Amen. It's not because I'm a Christian that I will accept everything. But the thing is, people will continue and will try to, to manipulate you. Be careful. The soft way of persecution is manipulation. People will try to manipulate you to do what they want to do, you know, and when you will not do that, they will call on, they will, they will attack your integrity. Oh, a child of God cannot happen, a child of God will That is persecution, you know, and you need to know that, you know, for, for example, I, I, knew, I used to have that around me. So if somebody come and tell me, oh, a Christian cannot do that, a Christian cannot do that, I look at him like me. You know, sometimes I will, if I'm very nice, I will say, you know, the Bible also teaches us that the devil is the accusator of the saints. So if you come and accuse, uh, accuse me all the time, might be the devil around you, man. <laughs> that is if I'm very nice. <laughs> if I'm not nice, I will look at you, I will say, get me behind me, Satan. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to face some persecution. It, it's not run about we will face some face persecution. You know, if you love Jesus, people will, let, will hate you for, for nothing. That's true. People will just hate you for nothing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, and if you are not smart, you will go and pray. Oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. God, God, I pray that you that, that people start loving me, that people don't, not, don't hate me, that people, you know? Hallelujah. Please don't, if you pray for, for me, Pastor Saul, I, 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 I really need prayer, you know? But please never pray that God, that people will hate me, will stop hating me. <laughs> are you telling me, are you getting me? Huh? Don't, don't pray that kind of prayer. Why? I'm very conscious of one thing. I love righteousness. I'm very conscious of one thing. I know what I preach. I'm very conscious of one thing. People don't like what I preach. Not because they hate me, but they hate the truth. So they will persecute, they will persecute me because of the truth. If somebody persecute me because of the truth, but let him do that. Amen. I'm gathering my blessings. Ah. Amen. Ah? <laughs> you know, you need to make sure that you will not hurt people. I don't say hurt people's feelings. Because anyway, with a glen, if you preach the word of God, you will hurt feelings. Hallelujah. 
By the way, I like hurting feelings, Mr. Elsie. Yes, I like hurting feelings. Oh, no, 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 I like hurting feelings. Why I'm telling you that? <laughs> but again, there's something we cannot avoid. Every time that you touch the flesh of somebody, you will hurt him. The flesh will not, never like, I don't say that, oh, you have to go and, and, and kill everybody. But look, the way that you can bring the truth the nice way you want it to bring to. But if this, if the truth is contrary to the flesh, to the, if it's, it's the spirit, is the spirit thing, so he will hurt the flesh. And the flesh will react. Amen? I get what I'm trying to tell you, brother. You see? Hallelujah. I ask you, so for example, let me let me take a basic example. Let me take a basic example. How can you avoid somebody to be hurt if you tell him pain is not good for you? How can you avoid if so if the person likes pain? How can you avoid people to be offended? People will tell you, hey, you know, you want to, you know, I'm telling you what I experienced. What? You know, people will tell you, hey, you don't like, you are, you are anti-feminism, you don't like women. You know, because they feel hurt. Of what? Of what the Bible says. So how can you try to not hurt their, 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 their feelings? How can you try to not hurt a feeling of somebody if you have to tell him, brother, if you were baptized in the mighty name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that is not a good <laughs> baptism, you need to go back again into the water. How can you tell somebody that without hurting his feeling? How? I like somebody to explain. You can turn around, you can turn around, you can tell, I, I, I tried or many times to see the one can you tell him to tell him, you know, brother, God bring us to glory, to another glory, to another glory. You know, you are not, you, it's not that you are not saved. Uh, it is just like, you know, like, you know, I would take Bible verse to Bible verse to explain, to prepare his heart, to tell him, oh, look, you know, it's not that, it's God, God wants to give you another revelation. You know what happened after that? They will tell me at one question. So do you think that if I'm if I baptize, if I if I if when I, if I if somebody who was baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, if he will go to heaven or if he go to hell? No, 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 no. That's not what they say. They they use this. They will tell you, hey, do you think, brother, that if somebody who is baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not saved? Okay, tell me which answer you can give him to not hurt his feelings. What answer can you give to somebody who tells you, ask you, who is, who is Trinitarian, baptizing in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and now you are telling him, oh, whether your baptism was not too right, now you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And then he, he, you, you bring all the verse that you know, all the knowledge that you know, and then he asks you, do you, so you are telling me that if I not get the Holy, if I'm not baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, so then I'm not saved? What would be your answer if you don't want to have this feeling? Either you will compromise with the word, and you will not have this feeling, or you will tell him the truth. You can, you can bring, the, no matter the way you will bring that, you can take one hour's to trick him the way you want to bring it. But at the end, he needs to understand that now that he get that revelation, if he's not baptized, then he's not saved. How can you tell him that without hurting his feelings? Because the fact, the only fact that you tell him that, oh, that is something lacking wrong, is already hurting. That's why I say I like hurting feelings of people. It's not that I'm going to every people and say, I want to help your feelings, I want to help your feelings. But there are certain truths you can look cool like this. I don't get what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that no matter what you do, it's, no, it's not a way for you to not be persecuted. You cannot be, I've never seen a wife in the Bible 
since the opening of the church, even beginning with Jesus, who was wise enough to find the tricks to bring the truth to people without being hated. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? So the thing is this. There's one condition we need to make sure of. If you're a child of God, first thing, don't willingly, don't willingly do, do harm to people. For example, if, if I have a quarrel spirit, if I have to quarrel with people, I don't know how to tell that, but if I, have, if, I, if I like discussion, like, I like huh? spirit of strife. Huh? This spirit of strife. So I, I, when I come with you, I try to strap with you to show that I'm not the best like you. That's not the spirit of God. Amen. So if you if you are like this, you know, you want to pull everybody down, that is not the spirit of God. Huh? Mm -hmm. So if you are persecuted because you are like that, that is something bad on your character. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with the word of God. Even though you, you, you're using the word of God, that is not the, that is not the right spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what I'm speaking about. If you're not somebody who's meek, if you are a mean person, you have, have, I'll be honest with you, I've, all, I've, all, I've made in my life Christian, very talented, very good, very, but very mean to people. Yeah. So if you are naturally mean to people, so that means that you don't love people. That's true. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So if people hate you because you don't love them, you know, that's that's not, has nothing to do with the word of God. Amen. I <coughs> so what I'm telling you, you need to make sure that people will not have anything to say against you. So they can attack you and they can now. If they don't have anything to say against you, so what they will persecute, what will yet will they persecute you for? For the word of God. And now we feel comfortable. I'm very feel comfortable when somebody's persecuting me because of the word of God. So now if I have a nasty character and somebody is persecuting me because of my nasty character, so then that has nothing to do with God. Right? Hallelujah. So, but if somebody persecute me because of my doctrine, how can I do against it? Huh? And that is what, that what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you because somebody, people who persecute me or who say things bad about me, they will always say one thing. You know, but the son is a, is a good guy. They will always say, oh, there's a good guy. He is a wife. He's a good guy. They are good people. They, they love people. But... Always a bird. And you know the bird, what the bread? The bread they say, oh, you know they have the, they have the, they say that in French in a, in a smart way. They say she has, she has a strange doctrine. He has a strange doctrine. You know, he has a strange doctrine. And then this this fact, but the strange doctrine will that that where the hatred will be, persecution will come. Oh, but don't, 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 don't fellowship with them. Don't, 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 don't approach them. They will, they will, you know, oh, those guys, oh, oh. you know, some, I've, oh, I've even heard this, heard this. They will say, look, look how people, how people so intelligent are. They will say, oh, you know, they are very kind because they want to attract you in their false doctrine. That's what people say. And that's why the urge you know, you know that people persecute you when they say, "Oh, on the mainly even I don't know, I'm not, I, I just put that in German. Oh, I I don't have anything against their person. They are good people, but I have something against what they say, what they preach, how they, what they, you know. Then it's persecution. Amen. I don't believe that people were hating Paul. I believe that people were hating what Paul was bringing to them. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? And then, I'm telling you, brother and sister, I'm telling you, we will face persecution. But please, when you face persecution, don't think, don't, don't, don't try to explain yourself. Don't try, don't, don't, don't try to make people love you. 
And I, I will always see people like this. You know, we like people to love us. We like, I like that everybody loves me. But unfortunately, if I follow God, many people will not love me. Are you, tell, are you getting what I'm telling you? That I'm telling you, and that I'm now finishing this, at this place, maybe. And if you follow people, if you, if you follow Christ, if you, if you are after righteousness, you know what happened? God, in the moment of need, will always put on your way people or them who will just be there for you for, the, for what you are needed. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? We need to trust God enough to stay in the, in the level of the mountain where we will know what is necessary for us to get the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's not good to mix. In our life as a Christian, we will face challenges. We will face adversity. We will face strange things. It's a part of the business. Hallelujah. Sometimes I'm very clear with you. I'm very honest with you. Sometimes I stay in my room and I pray to God. I say, God, why? Why do we have to go through all of this? And the answer is still the same. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not me? Why not? Hallelujah. Why not? Why not you? Why not you? Oh God, I'm suffering some injustice. Why not me? Hallelujah. Brother and sister, my prayer for you today. I don't know if you really understood what I was trying to tell you today. But I'm telling you one thing. We need to make a clear separation between the blessing of God in this earth and the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The blessing of God is attracting me to the real thing who is his kingdom. And that's what we need to heal for. We need to search for. And if you are kingdom minded, again, you will fail, you, you will have to give much. You will <coughs> have to open your heart much. You, you will have to face much. But you need to understand that at the end of the day, you have an heritage. And this heritage is in the community. With Jesus Christ for eternity. Let us stand. I don't know how you feel today, but sometimes I feel like God, I want you to walk more in. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? I feel like God, I want you to walk more. More. I want you more. More God. More of you in my life. More of you. God is not about me, but it's about you. Hallelujah. Let us wave our hands to the Lord today.